of the virus has broken the back of several businesses. Consumers are in hiding. Demand is down to a trickle. The supply chain is broken. Many sectors have been hit hard. What about real estate? Well, the sector too is reeling under the impact of coronavirus pandemic. A report from Prop Equity shows that a sale of property has not been this low since the economic slowdown due to the global financial crisis back in 2008. So, on FII today, we bring you the real estate COVID story, the potential short and long term impact on real estate companies, and should you be buying or selling or should you consider renting at this point? I'm Sonal Mirotra Kapoor and we'll be joined by industry experts to take you through all the questions that you've been sending us on various social media platforms as well. Now first, to understand what's happening in the property market right now, let's take a step back and look at how the sector has been behaving even before the COVID crisis hit the world. Now, we've pulled out a pretty precise graphic, uh, courtesy Prop Equity at this point, which analyzes the data in the entire sector. Now, this graph on your screen takes you to the journey of property in residential sector in India. Remember the beginning of the show, I told you it was much lower than the financial crisis back in 2008. Now, look at how the graph has been moving. After 2008, the financial crisis, we saw higher affordability, easier investment, helped real estate market actually do better. That's why after the crash in 2008 until 2015, we see a surge of investors in the real estate market. 2015, most developers unable to deliver on expectations and we see a downfall going there. 2016, demonetization, dense real estate like never before. It hurts the sentiment and we again see a dip over there. In March 2016, RERA happens, a new law in the real estate sector is floated that streamlines the dealing in the sector and brings in transparency. Then in 2017-18, GST implemented results in a new launches and again we see a little bit of a dip over there. 2020, we all now know COVID-19 records the lowest sale in property, residential property since 2008. So that's the story when you talk about sale and purchase. But what about rents? Now, the rental story in India has been more or less subdued because people are not keen on shifting houses for the fear of catching the virus. Also, lots of people who uh, were renting in metros earlier for work have now moved back to their family homes to smaller cities. This is a work from home impact. Now, that said, several people have also renegotiated re their landlords and have ended up staying if they got in a good deal. A different story, however, is uh, playing out in Mumbai, for example, where rents of some of the high-end property, luxury properties, have fallen up to 25%. And as that happens, is there scope for further reduction in prices and rentals? Well, that's something we'll be exploring on the program as well. Now, also another trend that has come up in the real estate story during the COVID crisis has been a lot of conversation in the sector revolving the future. Is the future digital? Is that manageable? Is that even practical? Sakshi explains. So what's the future of the real estate market at a time when we are in the midst of the world's largest remote working experiment due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Digitization has taken over and experts believe will continue to now be the foundation for the real estate sector. While digital bookings for the real estate sector are already on the rise, virtual site visits, interactions with developers online will also see a huge uptick. Webinars and digital registration methods as well as payment methods are now likely to continue to thrive in the future as well. For example, existing applications like DocuSign and DotLoop are already allowing real estate professionals to sign and send contracts and their documents on their phone. So these applications are expected to continuously grow in popularity as investors search for ways to conduct deals on the go. Virtual reality will influence the real estate world in the coming years. While investors may be familiar with the idea of 3D walkthroughs and 360 degree pictures, these resources are expected to increase in popularity. Experts also feel the need for space and the requirement of comfort is now going to be redefined for life. 
redefined for life well that seems to be the sentiment at this point but what can you expect what you should be doing we've got an expert panel for you lined up this morning we've uh, got uh, Samir Jasuja is the founder and CEO of Prop Equity we've got uh, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani is the president of uh, National Real Estate Development Council noted name in the industry Anuj Puri chairman of Anurag Properties Uddhav uh, Podar, he is the MD of uh, Urban Square, the Bhumika Reality Private Limited as well. Let me just begin by getting in Mr. Samir Jasuja. Uh, Samir, we spoke in and we showed that entire graphic, uh, a very clear graphic of what the trends in the industry have been in the times ahead, long term and short term. What are your expectations? Well, in the short term, the real estate market has come down in terms of absorption by about 40 odd percent. Uh, it came down to absolute zero in April and May when the lockdown happened. Hmm. But after that, it steadily started to pick up again. And as uh, what was rightly said was that the digital uh, applications are going through quite well. Uh, although there is a lot of token advances that are being taken right now and how many will fructify into real sales is uh, a question mark right now. But we see in the short term, the impact has been roughly about 40% as far as price corrections are concerned. Roughly 10% price corrections have happened uh, across the board, uh, but minimalistic uh, price corrections have happened in ready to move in properties. Uh, developers who are category B developers who are finding it very tough to sell their uh, projects, they are finding a much, they, it's much more difficult for them to go mm. out there and sell right now. But category A developers are doing extremely well and they're taking full advantage of the consolidation that has happened, the digitization that is happening hmm. and uh, they are passing on good schemes uh, especially with respect to payment plans where you can have 80-20 payment plan or a 30-30-40 payment plan where most of the uh, payments are uh, back-ended when the project comes to uh, fusion, when the project gets ready so that there is no pressure on the customer. Right. But uh, I think the worst is really behind us now and uh, going forward, uh, this is probably one of the best times to buy uh, because uh, one was not expecting, we, we had all expected the real estate had bottomed out but that didn't happen. Covid uh, took it to a new low and uh, now once the market starts to come back, uh, the opportunity of buying at really low prices or really good discounts uh, will not be there anymore. All right. Dr. Hiranandani, do you also believe that the worst is behind us? Oh, yes, I do believe. I agree with Samir uh, completely that mm. uh, his analysis of the situation is perfect. And I do believe that the green shoots are already there on the ground. So we have had uh, extremely good sales in the last three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, compounded, uh, benefit has compounded because the migrant laborers have returned. Interest rates have uh, remain subdued at 6.9% and of course there's a 3% subvention in the case of affordable housing and banks are ready to lend uh, today which was little hesitant in months of April and May uh, because they weren't very sure as to what the situation was. Uh, we do also see that uh, Maharashtra government has reduced the stamp duty rate from 1st October which is today uh, from 5% to 2%. Mm -hmm. So I think you will see a huge spurts of sales uh, taking place in the Mumbai, Maharashtra region. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely all this is taking a compound to do it. Uh, again, I would reiterate what Samir said. Mm -hmm. The ready to move in pro properties are going like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do find that people want a good quality of life, good construction. And they want to move into houses where they are more comfortable. Hmm. Earlier it was just a shelter, today it's a lifestyle, they want to move in because many of them have started working from home hmm. and they do see the benefits of a good quality lifestyle and townships with all the uh, uh, attendant benefits within it including hospitals, schools and other things, neighborhood, hmm. retail and all the other facilities being there. So green shoots are definitely taking place. So hmm. I agree with uh, Samir completely that uh, the market has turned for the better. Hmm. And yes, of course, there are uh, people and projects which are stuck uh, and those are the ones we are worried about because uh, many people have invested in them and we are trying to find out avenues by which they will also get into the completion mode and that's a worry because hmm. lots of people have invested into those plans. But uh, I am seeing uh, the markets turning completely uh, in the last four weeks and uh, there are uh, green shoot signs that it will improve further as the season comes about. 
your uh, statement also showed very clearly that uh, there were four or five reasons in the last three years why this setbacks took place in the real estate and because of that new starts did not take place hmm. so we will see housing starts in 2021 which will take place and uh, this will also add uh, a thing into it where people will start buying it but i agree but, but, but hold on hold on to the 2021 uh, estimations just yet because i'm getting lots of questions online 2021 just for a moment I, I you, you know before we went on air with the show we've got so many queries when it comes to properties to specifically today's show and lots of people writing in one question that i've got repeatedly from on instagram and twitter of viewers of ndtv writing in are they saying is this the best time then to invest or should they wait out and see till the starting of the next year or say the end of next year can i take that question uh, to anuj puri so i i would really divide into three parts this question uh the first is are you an investor because you use the word invest hmm. uh then perhaps it's not the best time are you an end user i definitely think it is the best time and hmm. you know i heard niranjan bhai uh, speak at samir hmm. and you know clearly residential is becoming like a, a social security uh subject and you know frankly we all have been surprised with the positive movement uh, that has happened and if you are an end user and you are really looking to move into a ready to move in or any project which is between 6 to 9 months of completion you'll have to be quick because the inventory is going out very fast hmm. yes there will be something available to you beginning of next year but that may not be the best inventory uh, that is uh, that is available you know clearly the home loan rate the mortgage rates are at this 15 hmm. year low but what we are finding very interesting is that prior to the pandemic the age profile of the home buyer was uh, in the age bracket of late 30s early 40s on an average mm -hmm. it's dramatically come down to early 30s so clearly there are a lot of these youngsters who were renting are now moving towards buying whether their parents are forcing whether their spouses are forcing whether they have just realized that you know it's better to have their own property i'm told even in many cities like pune and bangalore the the uh, society has differentiated between those who were renting versus those who were owners and okay. the ones who were the tenants in those societies the rules have been much more stricter and these people have got fed up and said we want to actually go out and buy our okay. own home Okay. So, if you are an end user, I would say is absolutely. Narendra Bhai is concluding his remarks was very mm. true that we are looking at a big festival uh, uptick uh, on, especially ready to move in or six to nine months of completion. All right, interesting. There, you talk about Pune. In fact, I have a question of a viewer coming in from Pune. Let's just listen into that. Hello, this is Nikhil. Uh, do you see cities like Pune showing a good demand compared to metros? Do you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. So, you know, generally I, I tell you is that we are finding that many of the smaller cities have done exceptionally well in this pandemic. Hmm. Uh, because one, a lot of the employees have gone back home and they're That's very right. effectively and efficiently working from home. So, you know, suddenly the demand, even, even when you look at the retail malls, hmm. the spending in those have been much more than what we have seen the recovery in the metropolitan cities. Hmm. Second, Pune has been a very credible backup on the IT side. Hmm. So we're seeing a lot of the companies uh, having their next sector from Bangalore. But can I Rabat remind you, Pune, Pune has also been a hot spot. Exactly. Maharashtra point, has also seen the most yeah. amount of cases and has been on the top of the charts for COVID cases across the country. Absolutely correct. And Pune, is certainly that third point, you're 110% right, it has impacted. Uh, that's because clearly it has been hit the worst, even harder than Mumbai, I would say. That's right. And, uh, and, and, and we have seen is that that is a cause of concern hmm. uh, for those living in Pune and Mumbai. But do you to buy see long-term impacts of these numbers in markets, say, in cities like Pune, etc.? I, I, I don't think. I think hmm. it is temporary at this point in time. What we are finding is that the hmm. workforce has left Pune. They haven't come back to Pune. Whilst hmm. in Bangalore, Hyderabad, even in Mumbai, we've seen that the workforce has come back on the IT side. 
Pune, we are still seeing many people still continuing to work from home and haven't come back to the campuses. Hmm. So I am hoping that once the things start to calm down with this virus in Pune, they come back and the sales start. But you're right, at this moment in time, it has been adversely impacted. All right. Let me also bring in Udhav Poddar at this point. Udhav, we have a question coming in from Vibhor in Delhi NCR. Uh, let's just play out that question and if you could take that, please. Hi, my name is Vibhor. I'm an entrepreneur based out of Delhi NCR. So my question is, uh, with most of the businesses hitting pause on their office requirements, commercial real estate has taken a hit. So is it a right time to buy into commercial real estate? Uh, or this work from home culture could actually extend this down period for this segment. Thank you. Work from home culture uh, extended is quite a hot topic these days, <coughs> but we'll not get there. What, what is our what is the industry uh, trend saying at the moment? I think uh, Sonal, uh, of course, work from home is here for, for some time to stay. Hmm. And I see some companies have also uh, announced plans for work from home for a longer tenure. Hmm. Uh, regarding commercial real estate, if the, if the, if the building is A-grade hmm. and uh, location is A-grade, I don't think uh, there's a long-term uh, you know, negative uh, impact on that building. So if you're getting a good building at a good rate and a good location, please go ahead and invest. That's, that's my view on uh, commercial real estate all across India. I would not say limited to Delhi, but all across. I also would like to uh, talk about uh, you know, smaller towns. That's where we generally work in. We, we are mostly operating in small towns of India and we see three, four trends. We see a lot of reverse migration from larger towns uh, into small towns hmm. and that's why there's a demand uptick in these small towns. Hmm. Also, we see some demand from NRIs who want to create some sort of safe heaven for themselves back home. And okay. we see a demand for a slightly larger house. Okay. Uh, people probably are working from home, so they want an extra room or a half hmm. room which hmm. they can work to their study and, and work from home. Hmm. Uh, and I also to add to what Mr. Nani said, the September sales have been fantastic. There was a lot of inquiry for the last 3-4 months but the conversions weren't happening. But September, uh, despite uh, there being a Shraad, you know, hmm. 20 days of the month went into Shraad and which is un inauspicious as per the Hindu calendar. Hmm. We still saw very very good sales in September month and we are expecting October, November to be uh, to be bumper months, uh, uh, this is what I can say. Bumper months, okay, that's interesting. Uh, Dr. Hiranandani, uh, do you agree with the commercial property rates uh, going up? Well, we've seen top companies across the world, even in India, for example, extending work from home till late 2021. And in fact, several companies, including Google, etc., have talked about a permanent shift. It also saves them a lot of money. Uh, I'm good to hear that because uh, it will improve the sales of residential apartments. So I'm quite happy having larger flats sold, extra rooms to be given to people, uh, people upgrading their homes. So from that perspective, it's wonderful for real estate. Okay. But having said that, let me focus on commercial. Hmm. My view, personal view is yes, for the next three to four months, uh, commercial is going to remain subdued hmm. and new commercial starts will not take place. And this is exactly what happened in 2008 and 2009. So what happened was commercial real estate was not started because of the Lehman crisis, the world uh, financial crisis. And in the next two years, the supply of commercial got limited. This is exactly what is happening now. And people are hesitant to start new commercial premises. So one year from today, two years from today, as GDP goes back from a negative of 5% mm. to a positive of 5%, that requirement of commercial will go up again. And because lots of people have not started commercial and they will be less ready to move in properties, commercial will boom again. So I, for one, are continuing to construct cons commercial real estate because I do believe one year from today, the market economy should come back. I do believe in the Indian economy. And I do think it will come back, but it won't come back in the year uh, uh, in the year 2020 because that's what you're focusing on. But 2021 end or maybe uh, early 2022, hmm. you will get a boom in commercial also as the economy gets back into it. The prime minister focuses on his five trillion dollar economy, and uh, investments go up and shoot into the marketplace. But okay. you're right. On one point, there is a question mark. Hmm. To what extent are the companies going to allow work from home and what is it going to be there? Uh, so there may be a shift from, uh, let's say, 20, 25 percent of the people working who are today working in the offices to per permanently work from home, hmm. which is not bad for real estate because ultimately the residential will grow 
proportionately. Hmm. But we have a contrarian view from Wipro. Hmm. Wipro has given an analysis hmm. which has now been published, and I just read it a few days ago, that the efficiency of the work done by people staying at home hmm. is less than 50% of what they were doing in the offices. Hmm. And if that is a correct interpretation of that, then the work from home is going to be very, very limited to those people where efficiencies can be monitored. Well, there are also reports which talk about the mental health impact of work from home and we've done yes. an entire episode yeah, on that as social, well. So like I said, the jury is out. It is perhaps it is perhaps a little too early to conclude on where we are going in the work from home journey. It will all really depend on how long the virus actually stays and how soon we can have the vaccine. But let me uh, bring in uh, Anuj Puri one more time. Anuj, uh, so much, is there a trend here? You know, we just did an episode a couple of weeks ago on how uh, there is now a flooding of DMAT accounts. People, younger people, you talked about younger people investing in companies. We saw younger people investing in DMAT accounts, jumping into share markets. So what is this trend telling us about where people are putting in their money so it is uh, interesting uh, you know clearly we've not seen as much inquiries come in from the younger people on buying real estate so you know maybe maybe this was the money that they had actually kept it aside on fixed deposit or mutual fund hmm. uh, may, maybe it was uh, it is that their parents are uh, lending it to them at this moment in time but clearly the trend has been hugely positive on these youngsters buying homes. Hmm. Maybe it's also that, you know, it is the home loan rates are at sort of sub 7%, which is what we had seen in 2006, uh, hmm. that they are getting tempted to be able to do it. Maybe it is the social security. Maybe it is a reason for them to say, is, look, you know, I have money today. I have a job today. Let me at least have this house over my head. I think certainly it is the older generation which is prevailing on the younger generation and saying, yes, guys, mm. in times mm. like these, you need to have a social security, mm. you need to have a physical asset. Mm. You know, we, we, we don't have a social security concept uh, in, in India uh, mm. from the government, uh, unlike in more mature right. markets you have right. that. So clearly that a bent of mind is starting to move on mm. uh, in with these younger guys. Again, I'm telling you, so I'm very surprised with this trend. I, if you had asked me this question in April, I would have said, no, the mm -hmm. real estate, certainly the residential sector is gone uh, for at least a year, year and a half. Well, I actually and agree you. with you because I've had a few phone calls coming in from parents as well. <laughs> and we've been going around uh, taking virtual tours of properties as well. So uh, this is actually quite uh, an issue and quite uh, uh, the yeah. topic at the moment. But I have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you so much. This was really enriching. And I hope we've been able to answer some of the questions of our viewers as well. Uh, you can continue to write into us at FII on Twitter, on Instagram, on other portals if you have certain questions or other issues that you want us to pick up for the moment thank you for watching we'll see you again 11:30 on weekdays